is Marjorie Ann Eloise Von Strauss, no relation. Born and raised in West Virginia, oldest of three, only daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Strauss. Attended college in Idaho, where she dropped out, met and married her first and only husband. Divorced at the age of 53, she restarted her life as a free spirit, jet setter, world traveler, lover of fine art and finer women. <laughs> Before finally settling down in the great Pacific Northwest of Seattle, amongst friends and family. <laughs> amongst friends and family, she is also known as Marjorie. Local nonprofit volunteer coordinator by day, gingerbread <laughs> architect by night, this woman is deadly. I repeat, deadly on the Scrabble board. <laughs> so exacting is her triple word takedown, so final is her high score that she is also, also known as the Marginator. <laughs> and this is her story. A story of memory, forbidden love, and resilience. The tragic loss of, the undeniable beauty of, and the side effects of. <laughs> Looked out over the veranda, what do you see? Beauty? Nature? Peaceful solitude? Or something else? Something sinister? <laughs> Under the bridge in that shadow, does it foreshadow of the great shadow that is to come? <laughs> <laughs> that seeps into your brain like ink drops clouding water. The taker of memories, time jumbler, word mumbler, world crumbler. <laughs> this guy, this guy <laughs> has no idea what's in store for him. <laughs> Hiding in the shadows lying dormant like a cancer, this evil has no cure. Cause is unknown, science is powerless to stop it. So please, gather your lovers close. <laughs> and your ex-lovers close. <laughs> For the journey we're about to take, will lead us to realize horrors unimaginable. The very idea gives me the willies. <laughs> Speaking of willy. Who's that? It's a cat reading a sexy fur machine. Mr. <laughs> Willie Wilkerson taking a break from his afternoon nap. Willie's not afraid of the great evil with sharp talons circling above us, ready to swoop down and take us away at any moment. Are you, Willie? <laughs> <laughs> in the summer of 69 at a friend's potluck in Potlatch, Idaho, over a dish of salted mixed nuts that sat betwixt them on the coffee table. While indulging in a salty, satisfying crunch, it came to their attention that Rose's natural aversion to the oft-forsaken Brazil nut complemented perfectly Marge's unnatural attraction to them, an attraction not necessarily born of necessity, but rather of clever conditioning, self-imposed, that came from the idea that if you learn to like the nuts that nobody else likes, you get to eat them all. <laughs> And let me tell you, this woman ate a lot of raw cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> Marge and Rose, sitting across from each other, salt crystals on their lips, nut skins in their teeth, their eyes met as their fingers mingled in the snack bowl, and they became the first inventors of electricity. <laughs> it was the beginning of a beautiful relationship. A truer, more pure love has yet to be found. On a side note, Brazil nuts contain high concentrations of barium and radium. Barium and radium are group two elements and their chemical behavior is very similar. The difference between barium and radium is that radium is radioactive. Brazil nuts contain about a thousand times the concentration of radioactivity than found in other foods. Scientists attribute this phenomenon to the extensive root system of the trees. <laughs>
champagne from the actor's fridge, and we sat there on their couches, alone in the theater, just the two of us, and drank and talked and laughed for hours. And by the time we finished the bottle, it was 2 a.m., and we were too drunk to drive home, so we walked the two miles to your place, where we fell into your bed, and I told you I loved you. But I was so drunk that it came out, I loved you. <laughs> and we laughed and fell asleep in each other's arms, fully clothed, fully happy. Remember? Rose stands there and smiles and holds Marjorie's hand. And it takes everything she's got to hold back her tears because unlike Marge, she can't remember because she wasn't there. <laughs> Marge is confused. The story was true, but it was some other lover. She's mixing up her memories. Rose's heart breaks just a little as she looks into her lover's eyes full of love and says, Yes, Marjorie, I remember. I love you too. <laughs> and then a moment of clarity. <laughs> In this moment, we can forget a little bit about forgetting. Cloud cover, like a soft, warm duvet on a winter's morning, only more evil. <laughs> same paths day after day so we can remember. Then we walk the same paths day after day so we don't have to. Walking down her neighborhood street, she finds herself suddenly in a place unfamiliar. Confusion begets a visceral response, nothing short of vertigo. Marjorie just wants to go home. She recognizes the buildings, but not what they're there for. She remembers the scenery, but not, not why it moves her. Then it too begins to fade. Black clouds erasing truths to make room for more truths. Black clouds erasing lies to make room for more lies. Another moment of lucidity. This time more fleeting than the last. The sunset, it lasts forever. There are no more people in these pictures. No more persons within these walls. Empty buildings within a vast landscape. <laughs> 